you are now listening to or watching the It Takes All Kinds podcast. Yeah, and if you aren't, you can head over to Apple Podcasts or Spotify and listen to us now, or head on over to Drib on YouTube and watch the video version as well. And if you'd like to stay up to date on when we're releasing a new episode or any other fun information about the podcast, you can give us a follow on Instagram at It Takes All Kinds Podcast and on Twitter at ITAC Podcast. That's I T A K Podcast. Without saying much else, we hope you enjoy this episode. <laughs> Gavin Carson Are you ready for a lifetime of adventure? Are you ready to rumble? We got our in-studio drummer here He's really good. Oh, he can really just rip that yeah, drum he, set, huh? The way that he's able to just stop so abruptly, like just like stop so all the good. cymbals and everything. Oh no, never mind. It actually does kind of <laughs> ring out. Good job, buddy. What's his name? Ricardo. <laughs> I love Ricardo. I took a screenshot. Good job. You didn't even know how to do that on there, did you? No. <laughs> certainly didn't. <laughs> Well, Carson, welcome to episode 24 of the It Takes All Kinds podcast. We are recording this on Sunday, August 15th, and you will be hearing this on August 19th or 20th. 20th. We'll just say 20th. 19th, if you want. Let's find out. <laughs> 19th, if you want. Yeah, you can listen to it on 19th, if, if you want. want. <laughs> It'll be there. I almost just threw up. Just had a little, had a little bit back up. Huh? Yeah, no, it's okay. It's okay. I understand. Gavin, you know a little bit about backing up, huh? You've had a bit of ba- you've had a bit of bit of bit of bit of back up in the pat and in, in the. I feel like I've had a bit of back up. Yeah, a lot of this going on. Yeah, I can hear this from your room. A lot of. Yeah. So basically, um. You were gone. I was gone last week, and I appreciate week. I appreciate you being able to find a host because I literally could not talk last week. It hurt to talk. <laughs> like, <laughs> I know they think that's uh, pretty funny. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I can't tell if that applause is for me or for you. Well, it's just it's just you know, it's for both of us. That's probably true. So uh, happy you're back, but they're happy that you're thanking me. Yeah, no, and uh, it Quinn did a really good job last week, and I listened to it. Did. Um, while I was moving, he said I, some I very officially funny moved things. everything I needed to into my apartment on Friday. So yeah, on Friday. Yep, officially. Yeah. When did like you finally weeks. get your bed in? Sunday, last Sunday, so a week ago. Okay. Okay. The night. After you called me and asked if I wanted to come help you move in at 10 yeah, o'clock at, the, at night. Yeah, at 10 o'clock at night. Listen, I felt good enough to move in, and I was like, now's a better time than ever. For you? Yeah. Maybe not for me so but, much. So then Sean helped me the next day. So Oh, good, yeah. good. So Sean helped me. He didn't have any work to so do that day. So. Yeah. It's okay. It's really not a big deal. I didn't, I didn't, didn't mind. It's just... It's not like a bit of a crybaby to me, Gavin. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I just call it how it is sometimes, okay? Yep. So uh finally I got the bed moved in on Sunday and then I was like I was like, Yeah, I have everything. And then I was everything. like And then I was like, wait, I don't have any hangers and I don't have half of my closet. Mm-hmm. I have half of my closet in my hamper. <laughs> yeah. I have the other half in my closet at home. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, All right, well I guess I'll just go get that at a different time. So uh yeah, so I'll just do you want me to just go ahead and tell you about my week? Let's say let's get right into it. Okay, yeah. So, well, so did you get first of all before we get into it? Did uh, you get everything moved in? Yes, yeah, so I finally everything. did. Yep, everything. Nice. I have like nothing at home. You didn't want to send me a picture of your room. Well, I was gonna take a video, but like, it's just not where I want it right now. It's not like I have to get some organizers. Can I come by and see it too? If you want. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'll be it, in the area on Tuesday and Wednesday. And yeah, Tuesday and Wednesday. If you're available either of those days. 
Just let me know, and I'll, and yeah. I can. I'll after just, f- I'll, I'll be available each of those days after four. Oh yeah, that's fine. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, if you want to, if you want to. If you guys want to meet us up there, we'll be <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we'll, at four. We'll be there. <laughs> we'll be at. We'll be there. Sorry. Wait. Do that again. We'll be at. With guns blazing. Yeah, with guns blazing. Yep. You know, actually, speaking of guns blazing, uh, one night after, uh, this is, I'm jumping the gun here a little bit, but. That's fine. Uh, one day. Wait, bo- you're jumping the. Yeah, jumping the gun. I was sitting in the Kane's uh, uh, drive through on Van Deventer in St. Louis. Ge- geolocating yourself Yeah, geo. Well, it's not, I don't know. It's, it's really not. It's you're not, fine. It's not, it's, it's you could fine. literally be anywhere. Yeah. Um, I was just in that area. And I don't actually yeah, I, don't, I don't actually live over there. And that's not even the street I was actually on. Yeah. Um I heard two gunshots and like no sirens afterwards. So it was just it was literally like it was literally like bop bop and then it was like quiet and I was just like, Well, I guess I gotta get my chicken somehow. Yeah. So I was like, Well, that's fine. How else are you gonna get your chicken? Yeah. So anyway, so this this week started out with a bang. So I started feeling not very good like Thursday night. Well, Thursday night, I got home from work and I was like, I need to find that. Thursday out. of last, not, not, not last, last week, week, but the but week, week before. before. Yeah. And, um, because that was the day we all, was it third? Yeah, it was Thursday when, shoot, I can't remember if it was Thursday or Friday we all went out for tacos and you were supposed to come. Friday. That was Friday. Night. That was Friday. Okay. Yeah. So Thursday, I was looking for, um, a bed frame. Okay. So I was like, uh, my mom, and my sister, like a while, like five years ago, ordered a bed, and it came with a bed frame, and they didn't want the bed frame. So my mom said she put it in the storage room. So we spent like an hour and a half looking for it all over the house. Did not find it. So I still don't have a bed frame. So the bed is literally just seriously. On the floor. Oh yeah. my gosh. So and I and my mom said she'll she'll buy one if I go look on Wayfair okay. and stuff like that. But I just seriously have not had time like to do anything. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um. So anyway, um. Then Friday rolls around, and I got, I got a little bit of chest tightness, and I'm like, well, it's probably just from kicking up all that dust in the storage room and in the, in the garage and all these, all these rooms that, you know, all these areas that, like, we normally don't hang out in and, like, kick stuff up. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, maybe that's just what it is. <laughs> and um, I was like, uh, so, yeah, Friday, and I was just like, nah, I don't even want to feel, I don't really don't feel like working. So, like, thir- Thursday, and I was just like, ah, I just called it. So what were your initial symptoms? Thursday? Initial were just... Thursday, I was fine. P- totally fine. Thursday, Thursday, you were fine. Yeah, totally, okay. th- fi- totally fine Thursday. Probably a little chest tightness. And then um, I started to have a little bit of drainage on Saturday. So you knew something was coming. On. I knew something was going to happen. And I was like, yeah. well, I don't know how bad it's going to happen. But I was like, and I was tired and I just kind of had a sore throat. And it was just kind of like, uh, like, I don't, I can't do anything. I don't, Put I, the mask on! yeah. So I was like, I was like, I don't think it's COVID because mm-hmm. I don't, nobody ever told me that they had COVID. And I yeah. was like, nobody I know has had COVID, and all my friends are vaccinated. And so you, like, and it only would have been from work, and yeah, it, yeah, no, or from your roommates. Yeah, and obviously they. I were hadn't, fine. I hadn't even been to the apartment really. Yeah, uh, that week. So it might have just been like, honestly, this this might have just been like, what seems like burnout, <laughs> just yeah. like of yeah. all, working literally almost every day all summer. Yeah. So it might have been that, but I mean that would make sense. And then Sunday rolls around, and I have an even sore throat, and I have uh, not as much congestion, but I could still breathe. That was the thing is that I mentally I was fine, physically I was not, and my sore my throat was really sore, and I could breathe totally fine. So it was super weird, and I was mm-hmm. like, so this is I was like it could be COVID because I was like chest tightness and being able to breathe fine kind of and sore throat it 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 seemed and i'm just taking a guess here so correct me if i'm wrong it seemed like (coughs) a milder version of what you had when you had covid yeah which would make sense because you've had the vaccine yeah Yeah. go get vaccinated and so it wouldn't be as bad right like my throat my throat kind of had that same feeling of like "Eh, somebody could i might have covid you know yeah so because you said when you had covid it felt like someone had burned your throat it it felt like somebody like cut my throat with a hot knife so well, I did. You were well, asleep. Yeah, oh, okay, good. I sedated you, and I took a hot... I want to be sedated. I took a boiling hot knife, and I put it in your throat. Yeah. And it just went... <laughs> just, <laughs> just fucked it up a, a little slits. bit. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then uh, Sunday rolls around, and I'm like, well, I have no other option. I have to move into the apartment, no matter how I feel. Mm-hmm. So I took some... I, you said Sunday? Sunday. You said? Okay. That was a week ago now. Mm-hmm. And um, Oh, yeah, it's Sunday. Yep. I think you mentioned that, but... Yeah, it's kind of nuts. 
time flies by fast when you have stuff to do. It's also, the probably one of the earlier times that we've recorded. Yeah, actually, it is one of the few. I think we recorded on a Saturday once. I feel like we recorded on a Saturday once. But I mean, like early in the day. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. It is. No, like, we definitely recorded on a Sunday before. Yeah. Uh, so um, my, and then uh, then I had to go to orientation after at like three o'clock, like orientation for my orientation, just mm-hmm. kind of like. Hey, you're getting trained for orientation. And I walked in and I like I was just kind of like, yeah, I f- don't feel great. So and uh and I knew around I think it was around like five or like 6 or 7 o'clock my ibuprofen started to wear off and then like we were doing like fun activities at night uh with the RAs and the OLs and uh the resident assistants and the orientation leaders just for anybody. I was I was going to guess what yeah. those meant, but that's okay. And uh, <coughs> registered assholes. Yeah, registered assholes. And uh, so we were doing fun activities with them, and we did like a little bit of just dance. And um, and then I was like, yeah, I'm really not feeling good. Mm. And so I was just like, I think like around eight thirty, I just came home, and then I went back to the apartment. And I was just like, nah, nah, I'm I'm just gonna go to bed. So I went to bed. Woke up the next day, and I felt fucking awful. I like couldn't. Sw- I woke up at like seven and just kept flip flopping over each side. Mm at like seven because I was, I was swallowing and then flipping and then swallowing and flipping and like, it hurts so bad to swallow. Mm -hmm. So I was, uh, so I, I mean, I was like, well, I gotta get up and do the training. So I, uh, got up there and then, uh, they're like, Gavin, we have some meds for you. I'm like, Oh, thank God. I I hope this helps. So they gave me some day quill. And uh, it helped a lot, actually. You like go to pharmacy it, school and like <laughs> we got meds for you. Here's some Dayquil. Day yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. You guys got anything else? Yeah. Um, and I uh, think that's. Funny. And then they're like, "Well, if you need Nyquil, let me know." I'm like, "Well, I'm good with sleeping," because yeah. I just associate Nyquil <laughs> with sleeping. Yeah. As, do you want me to sleep here? Yeah. Like. Uh, yours. Yeah. Like falling asleep. So then, yeah. Uh, I guess. This, uh, Today we're gonna go and we're gonna like it just um it just really hurt to talk like I yeah. hated talking and um especially because like I do all of these things like with my voice and not being able to yeah. use it was just like emasculating or it's just kind of like masticating yeah <laughs> it was just kind of it was just kind of like nah you yeah. know like my ego is gone basically yeah like this entire week it was shot my ego was shot you're just so shy yeah I was just, you're like, just very oh. timid hey guys. <laughs> Hey yeah. Um, so anyway, um, then they're like, Gavin, you don't have to come to the nighttime event with the RAs and the OLs. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm going home. Mm-hmm. Um, well, actually, they're like, Gavin, if you need to go home, like, go home. And then uh, I was like, oh, thank God. It was like three yeah. o'clock. And then I came home and I was like, I feel like I'm gonna barf. Oh, so I was like, yeah, I was like, I feel like I'm gonna barf. And it's probably all the snot. Yeah, it was. And it was. In your it was all the tummy. Snot. So I came home. Barfed, fell asleep for three oh, you hours. Did barf? Yeah, barfed up just mucus. Oh, yeah. It was horrible. Was it a lot? No, it wasn't. It was just like, it felt good because it was just kind of like, okay, I can go to bed now. I I can go to sleep. Yeah. So I woke up like three hours later. And I was like, I need to go to urgent care. I just felt horrible. My I uh my day coil had worn off. Yeah. Everything had worn off, and I was just like, I need to go. To, I need to go to urgent care right now. And by this, what day was this? This was Monday. Okay, this is Monday. Yeah, Monday, and uh, so then I texted in my group chat for the apartment because I didn't know who was home, mm. and I was just like, somebody needs to take me to urgent care because I can't, I could not drive, no. and I don't think, I don't think I had a, like a good lunch or anything. I didn't really eat a lot yeah. this week yeah. just because like my appetite, and my everything was just not very large. Mm-hmm. My fatigue was large, <laughs> but my I had appetite, a big fatigue, a big fatigue, but my appetite was not large yeah. at all. So, um. They, they, uh, Dylan, shout out to Dylan, uh, took me to urgent care and they were like, I told them, I walked in and like, I just set my head down on the counter and I was just like, like, hello, sir, how can I help you? And they're like, um, I'm like, I, I have a sore throat and a cough and my head hurts and I puked and they're like, all right, sir, go take a seat. We'll be right out with for you. So then they take just me to the, fall to the ground. Yeah. No, I was li- like. My hands were tingling because I think I was hungry. Oh. And, like, my hands were, like, just really tingly. Like, it... it you start getting rabid. Yeah, I know. Foaming and I out of like, your mouth. <sighs> I felt really bad for Dylan because, like, he didn't have any gas, so he couldn't sit in his car with AC. So, it's just sitting in his car oh, without AC, AC at, like, a 86-degree humidity, like, 
percent humidity yeah, yeah. point. So anyway, um, they got me into the room and they're like, "All right, so um, is all your medical history the same?" I'm like, "Yeah, like five eleven one thirty. Do it like." I felt horrible. Like I had such a raging headache at that point. I was hungry and my th- my throat was sore. Everything that I was like the the tipping point. And they're like, okay, well we're gonna give you we're gonna swap you for COVID. And the nurse didn't. She really just like got. She didn't like get in there. She just like got in my nostril. It's probably gonna get any. There's so many. There's so much. There uh, wasn't. There stoppage. wasn't. No, oh, really? I can, no. I'm serious. Like there's nothing in my nose right now. There, really? n- there was nothing in my nose then. There's. She's it's just, just trying to like it. Just keeps yeah. breaking the stick. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm it got jammed and then like they had, she like had to pull like a whole bunch of wax just out with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he just like like spaghetti. Yeah. Uh, mm. yeah, that's a good visual. Um, I'll think about it. So she didn't really get in my nostrils, so that was why I was like, okay, it's probably gonna be negative anyway. Yeah. So like, so then they came in, they're like, yeah, it's negative. They didn't swab me for anything else. They didn't do any other tests. And I was just like, Bruh. oh, like I mean, I feel this terrible. And you know, they're like. Well, we can get you some IV and fluids and stuff like that. I'm like, no, I don't think that's necessary. I've had a ton of they're water. They're gonna swab you, but they're gonna give you an IV. Yeah, and they're like, so we're gonna we're gonna send you out with famotidine, which is just like an anti um, like heartburn medication, but it also helps with nausea. Okay. I figured they were gonna. Um, I figured they were gonna. Well, they were also gonna give me like Zofran or Ondansetron, which is mainly for nausea, but I, it has an interaction with one of my maintenance meds. Hmm. Um, so I was just kind of like, all right. So then they gave me Flonase and it was like 30 bucks for both of them. I'm like, yeah, fine, whatever. Cause yeah. I didn't have to, they didn't do whatever. And then I was like, well, all right. So then I came back Tuesday and they're like, how do you feel? And I'm like the same. I was like, I can't talk. I can't, I'm drinking a ton of water. I, I didn't go back that day. I came back to orientation training that week on Tuesday and I really just felt the same. And, um, I didn't go to the nighttime activity. I think they sent me home. You know what? I don't even think I came in on Tuesday. I didn't come in on Tuesday. Mm. They they were like, hey, Gavin, if you don't feel up to it, just don't come in. Yeah. I'm like, cool. Sounds good. Won't come in. I slept like all day. I literally slept till like three o'clock that day. Yeah. They're like, you need some rest. And I'm like, cool. Sounds good I think good I remember to me. texting you that day and you're like, I just woke up for the first time. Yeah. In like 24 hours. Yeah. It was, it was a long day. Mm. But four days really helped. Good. Um, so then Wednesday rolls around. I had I was just kind of chilling. Um, the f- the first years were moving in. Freshmen were moving in. Um, and I was there. I think I did the opening rally, and then I didn't do like the nighttime activity with them. I just kind of like went home. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're like, you don't have to stay here. And I was like, okay, cool. So I was there from like two to like six o'clock ish. Mm-hmm. Came home and I just fell asleep. Yeah. So then Thursday rolls around and I'm like, all right, um, I'm going to still feel the same. Can't, sw- can't talk, can't swallow, everything hurts. So um, then they sent me home around, I think uh, it was like around two o'clock, I think again, around that time. And I think, or no, it was like, I stayed until six o'clock on Thursday. Okay. And they're like, "You need to go to the doctor after this." I'm like, "Okay." Yeah. Because we were taking a picture at six o'clock, and they're like, "Take, we're gonna." Sorry. <laughs> sorry, heart monitor again. <coughs> uh, that we're gonna take this picture at six. You go home. I'm like, "Okay, mm-hmm. cool." So then, uh, Friday rolls around. They call me at like eight fifteen. I had slept past my alarm. I was supposed to be there eight thirty. It takes like five minutes to get there, but yeah. Um, I had a shower and all this stuff, and I was just like, "Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna make it." I'm like, I'm just going to call urgent care right now. And I woke up at like 930 and then I call urgent care and I'm like, hi, I was there Monday. Um, I still feel the same. Nothing's nothing's really progressed. Mm-hmm. Um, so can I get on the wait list? And they're like, yeah, there's 29 people ahead of you. All right. Sounds good. And I'm like, back to sleep for me. 29 people. Yeah. I'm like, back to sleep for me. So they didn't get to me until like. 145 i called it like 9 30 so i was like so i got there a little bit early i was like number three in line i went to qt got a sodi went to urgent care because i was like i was like i'm really hungry but i don't want to eat if they're gonna swab something down my throat yeah. you know 
They're like, you don't have anything, but we found a half eaten yeah, hot dog. Yeah, they're like, yeah, we found like a McChicken in your back, in your back of your throat, a piece I'm of lettuce. Sh- I'm so tired. I'm so tired. <laughs> this is the most tired. But it's I've lunch. Ever been. This is the most tired. It's I've been lunch in my time. time. Yeah. Um. <laughs> you had urgent care with a hot dog yeah, in your sleep. Yeah. Is that a hot okay? dog? Is that a hot dog? I'm just so, so tired. tired. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so then uh, they get to me, and same. They were like, "All right, so since you don't have insurance because you haven't paid for school, and you have to pay for, and if you want to get your insurance, you have to pay through school because that's where I get my insurance. It's through mm. school. Uh, you're gonna have to pay like the ninety nine dollar fee just to like get seen." And I'm like, "Cool." Nine nine dollars a good scene. Awesome. Love it yeah. already. So, because last time they didn't charge me at all. They just charged me $30 for the meds. Why didn't they charge you last time? I don't know. I must have been in that poor condition. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, we feel bad for this guy. And it's, it's kind of bad. it's kind of funny because it takes, a, that, like, there's that much, like, choice for a nurse to make that decision, you know, to be like, yeah, this guy looks bad. I'm not going to charge him. Yeah. You know? Uh, so, anyway. Um, so, why did you not go through the insurance at your school? Well, because uh, it rolled over on July 31st, and to get it, get another, to get, like, renew the insurance, I have to pay for school again. I haven't paid for school yet. Oh. I get it through my school. Okay. Yeah, it's, like, on my school bill. Okay. I see what you mean. So, they're like, all right. So, they swabbed me for COVID again. Got the hell in my throat for... Oh, there we they go. They got in my, they got way in my nose for COVID. Good way in my throat for strep throat and they're like we're gonna test you for mono i'm like i've never been tested for mono what so do they do for that they they lance at your finger <laughs> do you have to kiss the doctor <laughs> yeah, like I said, tell me how you feel so in a couple gonna of test for mono okay pull your mask down okay all right now pucker give up me, yeah right. give me a big old smooch no you don't have mono. yeah you're good <laughs> so they lance it they like uh like lanceted my finger they like put like this little thing and just like cut open my finger just like a little slit. oh okay and then they just like kept dabbing it to, to like get blood to like suck it up into this little thing. Jesus Christ! Yeah, I don't. I've never seen that before. I haven't. Uh, either. I have never had mono before. Yeah, my um, I, only person I've known who's had mono was my brother. He had mono one. It was horrible. Yeah, and so I mean, like it's. it's I mean, better safe than sorry to get tested for that. Yeah, but I also haven't kissed anybody in like months. So but you know. Yeah, maybe I. Yeah, I was kissing. I'm kissing. I had a couple peop- late nights. Yeah, I was yeah, about to say, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Carson came over and snuck into my room and gave me a big old schmooch. So they tested me for all that stuff, and then they're like, "All right, well, they called." Then a different nurse came in, and she had the sheet with her, and I was like, "Oh fuck!" I was like, "It's gonna be all three of this positive." And she's like, "Well, <laughs> for the strep, COVID, COVID yeah, and, and mono. mono, yeah." So she's like, "For the strep, COVID, and mono, they were all negative," and I was like. Cool. See, she says they're all, and then you. D- Wait, hold on. Oh, shoot. I don't know if I have anything I don't for think this. I have a drum roll. Fuck. No, that won't work. Maybe that will work. Hold on just a second. <laughs> That's, that'll work. Hold on. Fuck. I don't know if any of these will work. Let's just try this one. <laughs> Sir, for all three of your tests, they all came back. Negative. Yeah. That's how it felt. <sighs> And then they're like, all right, so what do you want to do? And I'm like, well, I still can't talk and I can't swallow mm-hmm. and it hurts. And I have a cough. And they're like, okay. <laughs> yeah. They're like, all right. Uh, so we're going to give you a steroid shot. Oh, yeah. I need to ask you about I forgot about that. I remember you told me about it and I was like. I'll explain it to you once I'm done with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah, gave yeah. me a steroid shot and then they gave me amoxicillin. Because they're like, it could be bacterial. We don't know. Mm-hmm. I was like, um, I'm like. I literally, I'm not kidding. I, I only worked and slept all summer. Oh, I didn't really. I went out yeah. to restaurants. Maybe you know, I went through drive-throughs, sat down at a restaurant maybe once a week. Yeah, did not hang out with anybody. I was like, I didn't hang out with anybody. Nobody I know of that I've ever hung out with has yeah. gotten COVID. So I was just kind of frustrated because it was like they don't know what it is, and I'm mm-hmm. like, well, cool. So I just still felt really bad. So they gave me, it's a shot of dexamethasone. That's a, a steroid. Okay. Um, and they gave me amoxicillin. So and then they. Why did they give you the steroid shot? Uh, so the steroid is basically just like, so like ibuprofen is non-steroidal, anti-inflammatory. 
Okay. Anti-inflammatory. So this is a steroidal anti-inflammatory. It's anti-inflammatory. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. Because I had inflammation in my throat. So they gave me an anti-inflammatory for that. Steroid. Steroid. Just kind of boost your immune system to be like, all right, here's this. Like, all right. And what you guys don't actually know is when Gavin got here, I was actually in the shower and it and it took a little too long, and I didn't answer the phone right away. So Gavin just busted my fucking door down. Yeah, I uh, called the SWAT team. I called a, I called a uh, drug, uh, called a drug bust on him. You called them here, but it didn't even matter because you'd already pushed my door down. Yeah, I'm like, crazy. there he is. I so, thought he was on tra- Trinibol, Trin. Yeah, <coughs> juicing the trend cough. <coughs> <coughs> I Sean told me about it. It's meant for horses. <laughs> Of course it is. So that's why you cough, because it's so strong in your chest. Well, horses cough. You ever heard a horse cough? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, then the steroid shot helped a lot. I feel great. I can do things again. I feel like I've just been given a boost of testosterone. <laughs> let's do it again. Yeah, let's do it again. I let's got some in my closet. Yeah. You want to shoot up? Yeah. It'd be like Barry Bonds and Mark McGuire. Amen. You guys want to go Barry Bonds in the bathroom? Yeah, go Barry Bonds. So, yeah, that was my week. It was exciting, and none of the freshmen really know who I am. Because you didn't talk to them. Because I couldn't talk to them because... They I think you're a mute. Yeah, they're like, they're, they're like, do you know sign language? And I'm like... <laughs> so, anyways. Can you imagine a sign language podcast? That'd be pretty. I'd I'd listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it sounded like. So yeah, that was my week. Um, and then Friday, whenever I was off, uh, I was like, let me just go home. So I got my stuff. Uh, turns out that I thought we were gonna have like this microwave still. Um. Because, like, our microwave at home, like, it broke. Like, it stopped working. It wasn't reheating potatoes. At home or at your apartment? At home. Okay. At my parents' house. They were like, it wasn't reheating potatoes. My mom's like, I've had it. So she just was like, took it out. She, like, took it out and then, like, got this really shitty one that we've had for, like, 25 years. Uh-huh. Pulled it out of the basement and then put it in the old slot. So it's, like, this really small, like, oh, microwave yeah, yeah. or, like, this huge slot. And uh, that microwave was huge. And I, I was, like, telling Ashley and Dylan, I'm like, oh, yeah, like, I'll have this microwave. Like, I could bring it back tonight. And then my mom and dad were like, yeah, we took it to, like, a repairman. They said it cost, like, $300 to repair this microwave. What the fuck? This part. How much are microwaves? Well, microwave. I, I don't know. Are microwaves that No, expensive? they are, They really aren't. So they're like, well, I guess we just wait to buy it. I'll just... We'll, buy a new one. Yeah, I guess we'll have to buy a microwave at some point. So I uh, got a toaster oven, got all my clothes, got my I razor got charger, got my hangers. Razor scooter charger? No, my like razor, my electric, electric razor. razor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, that was an extra extravagant week of doing shit else. I felt so yeah, unproductive. Fuck all. I wanted to do all of the things that they were doing, but I just couldn't do it. It was just like I want to be yeah. there, but everybody was like, "No, Gavin, you look terrible." Like y- they'd walk in and they would just go, oh. <laughs> "Yeah, like." Oh. Fuck. And they, they hear uh. me. Ah! 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 And all of a sudden, like, they're all having a good time. And then you walk in and they're just like. Oh, <sighs> yeah. Jesus. That's how I felt. Because I was like, I was like, I took like an hour and a half nap during one of their. Because like. <laughs> on the we, floor. Yeah. Because like, no, seriously, it was on the floor. Oh, God. Uh, In like another room, like our like home base. Because like they were in a seminar for freshmen and they, it was going to take like two hours. So I was just like, yeah. I'm going to take a nap. And that's why they were like, all right, Gavin, you're going home at six. Mm-hmm. After we take this picture, you're going home. I'm like, okay. Okay. Fine. So. I guess I'll go home. Yeah. Basically. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. How was your week? So, that was it? Yeah. Well, Gavin. No, it's kidding. It was shit. No, it was it was good. Yeah. So, what is that? Is that I think it's I think it's this. No, what is it then? I don't know what that is. Is it like headphones or something? Is it me? My week was was good. I'm happy to have you back. It was obviously it was fun and enjoyable to have Quinn on, but I always have to have my boy here. 
and I'm <laughs> just splashed right on your forehead. <laughs> How did that even just happen? I don't know. Uh, oh shit! Now he's mad. Uh, we're gonna out. have to. Uh, we're gonna have to. I'm hulking out. We're gonna <laughs> have to. End the I'm not. I don't take steroids. I don't take steroids. Did they shoot it in your neck? No, they gave it in my arm. Oh, bastards! You gotta shoot it right in your neck. Gets yeah. Gets to get to get in my gizzard. Get in your glizzard. Yeah, no, it was it was uh it was it was, it was a good week. I had a good week. I started at my new job, quote unquote, uh, two weeks ago. Yeah. So I've been doing that for the past two weeks. It's been going good. Been fun. It's fun to get back to editing. It's obviously not the most fun thing in the world to edit, but it's just like nice to be editing. I realize that that's like a lot of trust they put into you, because like you have to edit weddings and stuff like that, right? Yeah, so that's all I'm editing. I, that's just for like now, I least. think that's just like a lot of trust on the company's part. I mean, I'm glad that they, I'm glad I'm happy that you they know. shouldn't. <laughs> I put a lot of little secret things in there. Yeah, you go like just a little dick butt. Yeah, just a little dick butt at the very corner. Yeah, they don't see it. Yeah, yeah. No, it's been going good, and I think I'm doing well. They seem to like what I'm. They seem to like my work. And yeah, so I'm gonna continue doing it. <laughs> but it's been going good. I've just been doing that, and I'm trying to think of if I did anything else interesting to talk about. Uh, I don't th- really think I did. I worked, and then I worked some more. Took my dog. Took uh, took my dog to the pool. Louis. Did, yeah. You took him to like McNair. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. For that swim, and that was fun. Does he, that mean the pool closed? Pool yes, done? yeah, the pool is down. Yeah, so uh, we went there, swam with him. He jumped in the deep end. I think Quinn and I might have talked about it. Maybe we didn't talk about it on the show, but um, yeah, that was a fun time. And um, yeah, just been working and everything like that. Did you see this? This well, first of all, I was checking the news today because I had. Two things happened that I didn't know about. The Afghanistan thing and then the earthquake in Haiti. Did you hear about both of those things? I did see it, but I I I've been I'm as you know, a bit busy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh I know, Gavin. A bit busy. Sure, dude. Whatever. Yeah, so uh there was an earthquake in Haiti and like seven hundred people died. I know is that well, many. I, I, I yeah, I didn't either. Didn't even know what happened. There it is again. What was that? It's not even nothing's even moving, which is weird. I'll move this up here. I don't know what it is. I don't know. It's there. just happening randomly. So, um, yeah. So I saw that today, and that's crazy. And you know, it hurts to go out to the Haiti. And then the Afghanistan thing was is that, as far as I know, the Taliban took over the capital of Afghanistan, and the president just like fled. Yeah. And then uh, the U.S. pulled their troops out of Afghanistan. Which I didn't know we still had troops over there. I thought we pulled out in 2011. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. Well, that's the thing about um, whenever Americans move out of like their bases and stuff like that, and those they leave like everything. Yeah, they just like literally Take one. Yeah, they like leave like the vending me ma- vending machines full of coke <gasps> and everything. They like leave vending machines like food, rations, everything. I mean, like they don't leave ammunition, obviously, but they leave yeah. like all the food and like beds and stuff like that just there, mm-hmm. just camps. They just leave. Right, and now we're not gonna have any more coke. All we, of our coke we have is a gone. coke shortage. We have a coke shortage. The coke shortage of twenty twenty one. You remember when I, I? You don't drink as much Dr Pepper as me, but there was like a Dr Pepper shortage like a couple years ago, like in the St Charles area. Was there really? Because like no I restaurant. Do remember that? No restaurant had Dr Pepper. No That's restaurant had Dr so Pepper weird. over here. Why? Like I would ask for Dr Pepper, and they're like, "Sorry, we're out." I don't know why, but like I was gotta get to the bottom of that. Yeah, like I we went to breakfast places, we went to dinner places, we went to fast food. They all did not have Dr Pepper. That's bizarre. I didn't. I don't. Yeah. So weird, but uh, obviously it's fine now. I feel like I kind of remember something like that, but I don't. Yeah, that is a very weird thing to have a shortage of. Yeah. No, it is. Um, I told you a little bit about this on on Saturday because we were texting. Um, cause I shot a wedding on, or not Saturday, Friday, excuse me. Yesterday was Saturday. Um, I shot a wedding on Friday and it, I, I had told you it was probably, it was probably one of the most interesting weddings I've shot. Cause first of all, it was a very expensive one. And second of all, 
the bride's side was all from the Ukraine, including her. And then the groom's side was all from Honduras, including him. And a global uh, wedding. Yeah, seriously. And I guess the midpoint is St. Louis. Yeah, so that all worked out because the bride's family had moved to St. Louis. Um, I was talking to the dad, and he said they moved from the Ukraine uh, 29 years ago, like after Chernobyl and shit like that, which I wanted to be able to talk to him about more because I think that would have been interesting to like yeah. hear his perspective on that. Because I don't remember exactly where Chernobyl was, but I think it was like either in the Ukraine or like close Near, to it. Yeah. But I mean, like he grew up in like Soviet Russia, which is like crazy. Let's see. I'm gonna look yeah, it's kind of nuts that like we we learned so much about like the Soviet Union and stuff like that when like all of our parents and there's a lot of people alive that are still that lived during the yeah. Cold War and yeah. like well, bad pigs. Because her yeah, her grandparents <coughs> were there. The the grandpa's name was Igor, <laughs> and the other one's name was uh, Vlad Vladimir, I believe. Yeah, his name was Vladimir. Yeah, so it was in the uh, in the north city of in the north city of Ukraine. So in the Ukraine, so. Crazy. So he fled because of Chernobyl, or well, just like after that. I mean, just like growing up there in the Soviet Union, and then you know, I mean, thirty year, whatever thirty years ago was, because Chernobyl was eighty six, ninety one. Um, yeah, so it would have, yeah, or ninety. They just wanted to get. He just wanted to get no, the fuck out of there. Ninety two. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so that was interesting to talk to him a little bit about that, and just like. It was crazy because we have to put mics on people for their speeches and stuff like that. And the you blow them out of proportion. Yeah. Wait, what? You blow them out. <laughs> Sometimes it sounds like that because I've been editing those now and you'll hear. <laughs> um, so like miking up some of the, the bride's family who didn't speak a lick of English. It was all, you know, Russian. Um, and then miking up the bride or the groom's family, uh, who only spoke Spanish, was just like it was so weird, because like that was the first time I had to go up and I'd be like, I need to put this on you. Yeah. <laughs> They'd be like, what? Yeah. So that's how that's kind of how it is whenever I work in the pharmacy and someone's foreign, foreign, foreign. Uh, because it's like, I, I know you need to get your medications, but I don't know your name. Yeah. Like I don't know how to ask for someone's name in Spanish. Yeah, I don't. I don't either. And it was just kind of like, so I they. Know how to so tell I'm people. like, so they kind of got you. They they started to get used to it. So they just hand me their ID. Mm-hmm. So, and you take it. And you yeah, put it in I your take pocket. it. I take it, and I'm like, Sorry. yeah, no, it doesn't work. You snooze, you lose. Yeah. Sorry, sir. This ID. You got real. caught lacking. Yeah, I'm gonna take it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was. It was just very interesting, and they had a lot. Of, it was really cool because they um, they had a. Uh, a driver drive them around to the locations of where we did uh, like took photos at, and they rented a like a f- I want to say like forties or fifties Rolls Royce. Wow! So I can't even imagine how much that car cost, but it was fucking beautiful. Yeah, it was all white. They, that might have came up. from a private collection. I'm oh, I'm sure kidding. it had to have because I've been to a couple private collections that some guys have because oh, my grandfather. Rag. Because my grandpa was really into cars, and um, there are some really big private collections of cars that people have just in this area. Yeah, alone. It, was, it looked kind of like this. Actually, I think it was this, but it was all white. Oh my god! It was, dude. It was like, <sighs> that's Jesus incredible. Christ. Hold on, I'm gonna look up. Uh, see if there's any that are for sale and see if we can find a price on it. It's gotta be like three hundred thousand. Oh, at least I can't even. Yeah, f- eight hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah, this fifties. I mean, that's buying it, not renting it. Yeah, yeah. No, I got. Yeah, I'm sure it's not cheap to rent it either, though. But so that was really cool. Um, this is the first time where I got. So usually we don't get tipped. Um, You're allowed to though, right? Yeah, we've got. I've gotten tipped before. Like the most I had gotten tipped before was like fifty bucks, which is a lot compared to what I. Pay. Um, but this time we each got tipped a hundred dollars. Wow. Which was awesome. How many people were there with you guys? Just me and another person. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's good then. I yeah. Mean, I, I, 
uh, honestly, like immigrant families are some of the most like gracious families. Well, yeah, and they were like, it was, you know, and it's weird because, and I won't get into too much detail with all of this just because I don't know what all I can say, but uh, a lot of the time, so what usually happens with these weddings, and I don't have any part of this. This is all um, the people who like work full time for my for this company. Um, what usually happens is they meet with the couple like months in advance or, you know, sometimes even a couple times and talk to them about what they want, what they want to get. A lot of them will email them be like, Hey, I want to make sure I get this in the video. I want the video to look like this and blah, blah, blah. So I want it black and white. I want it black and white. No sound. I want, I want it a shot on film. Yeah. So this planning company who, ac- so we actually were contracted through this planning company. Really? Okay. And every time we work with this planning company, we're contracted through them. We're not chosen by the actual couple. The right. couple will say, we want video, and then the planning company will be like, here we go. We know a good video company. Yeah. So this planning company like takes care of like everything for you, mm-hmm. like literally everything. And their deposit, which I, I'm sure this is public information, so I'm sure I can say this, the deposit that you have to pay them for everything they do is $40,000. Jesus Christ. For a wedding planner. Holy shit. So, and they take care of everything. Mostly everything. Yes, yeah. And uh, so it kind of sucks for us because, like, usually, like, m- the people who I work with, uh, the the girl who works there full time will, like, detail out things that they want to make sure they get that will have a timeline of their whole day and we still had a timeline of their whole day but it wasn't super detailed just because it's like you know we don't know what's we pretty much with these shoots we get there and we just kind of go with the flow right um especially if it's through a wedding planning company you know you yeah don't, exactly you can only do what they give you yep yeah so uh where was i going with that so um i'm not sure where i was going with that anyways so yeah, that that part of it was super interesting because I never worked with a a wedding like that. But um, so, oh, okay, so yeah, so we didn't know anything about them. So when we got there, like everybody's super nice and super cool, and uh, and they were like, what I liked, it, what I was worried about it was, is like, okay, this is an expensive wedding because they're paying for this elite planning company that's forty thousand dollars plus. Um, and then also the ballroom they rented, even though I think we ended up finding out later, they probably didn't spend that much on the ballroom because the ballroom usually is a lot bigger than the one we were in. Hmm. And that is so you just like close the door or close the walls. Yeah. Yeah. They only had like one side of it open and that alone, just for the room, no bartenders, no catering. Cause a lot of places will come with that stuff. Just empty was $60,000. So it's a hundred thousand dollars for the planner and the ballroom, but I think it was probably half that just because they only had part of the room. Um, and so, like, going into it, I was like, okay, this is probably going to be some rich people. They're probably families are probably going to have money. They're yeah, going to be, they're going to be uppity. They're going to be, you know, oh, yeah. not, yeah, exactly. So, I kind of went into that with that mindset, but when we got there, it was like very much like it was, from what I could tell, I'm just assuming it was the groom who was like, you know, self made became you know came from honduras which i'm sure is not a rich comp a rich rich company rich country and came here went to med school is about to be a transplant doctor heart and lung transplant doctor wow. in new york at columbia university wow so it definitely came from him and like even the you know the bride was very you know they're both like self-made like no like the families didn't have money it was definitely like he had made this and like you know so yeah, it wasn't like they were uppity. It was, it was, which was nice, you know. Yeah. Um, well, med school's not cheap, so they might have just been adding to that mountain of yeah, uh, mountain of debt. Yeah, no, I'm know? sure. Um, yeah, so it was just really good, and they're really nice people, and the families are really nice, and it was just very interesting. It's something, something on my mic, I think. Yeah, I'll figure it out. Yeah, fuck it, dude. Whatever. I don't know. This so, is just really loose up here. You're really loose. So it's just very interesting because it's like. Working with weddings is cool because it's like the first time I've ever been able to like experience different like cultures because like growing up here, it's like you're white and from here or you're black and you're from here. And that's like it. We have a few Hispanics. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You're most like 90% Catholic. 
Yeah. And then we have a few Hispanics, not many. Yeah. And like that's it. And, or they'll be here for a couple of grades and then leave. Exactly. So like that's kind of what we grew up with. So like getting out of that and like seeing all these new people, like experiencing like real Italian people for the first time. Yeah. And you know, people from Jewish culture and stuff like that. It's just been like that's really yeah, interesting. That's really that, cool. Like, that camera's been off for like fifteen minutes. I just thought about <laughs> Well, that's like that's been my thing. Whenever I first went to college, I oh, realized yeah. that was like really cool because it wasn't as homogenous, you know, very yeah. same. And uh, it was really cool to have like a diverse friend group for a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. to be like. No, exactly. It, it was cool to be able to talk to somebody that didn't have the same background as me because we all. Mm-hmm. It, it's really. Yeah, I mean, it just kind of sucks just how white and old St. Charles is. Yep. And I, and I you know. Don't get me wrong. I love it here. I but love it because like, it's easy to navigate. And yeah, it's like, just like everybody is from here. here. Yeah. And they oh. stay here. They're just like a lot of people are just like the same. Yeah. And, and you, you don't, don't realize that. And you don't you don't like mo- you don't like. Uh, for example, I eat at fast food restaurants a lot. Mm-hmm. So I'm only going to run into people who run in, who go to fast food restaurants a lot. Yeah. So if uh, if someone is like rich and they eat out all the time, I'm never going to see those people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that, they, those types of like, that you don't, that doesn't happen in St. Charles. You don't see like rich people hanging out with, or, you know, like old, old rich people like molding with fast food eaters. Yeah, yeah. Much intermingling there. So yeah, no, it is super cool. I'm real. That's I, like, I love hearing these stories. Cause like, yeah, uh, it's just, it's a whole you, yeah, world it's out literally there. a whole, like, I, I think that if anybody has a chance to ever just like get out of the country, like go. Yeah. If you ever have a chance, just go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm hoping to soon and, you know, experience new shit and see how other motherfuckers live. Yeah, because, I mean, we're all on the same planet, so. <laughs> Dude, isn't and, that the truth? And it's hot as fuck right now, Bob. It, it certainly is, and it's just going to get hotter. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> it was actually hotter in uh, the Arctic Circle yesterday than it was here. It was 118 what? degrees Fahrenheit, the Arctic Circle. How is that even possible? Global warming. Jesus Christ. Hey, guys, we're all going to die, huh? But we're going to go. But guess what, guys? We're going to go out laughing. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Is there a plane going overhead? Yeah, dude. <laughs> no, there's no plane. There is no plane, Gavin. But there is someone at the door. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So uh, weddings are fun, and people are fun, and Russians are fun. They're very different, though, man. They're like just very. Oh my god! And then whew, I'm gonna say this. I don't really care. Uh, the photographer we were working with was awesome. I. I you know, we get a lot of photographers, and I can just say this because fuck it. We get a lot of photographers that are like dicks. Yeah, for lack of a better term. They're really not fun to work with. But this guy was great. And the company he works for, the two people I've worked for from there are great. Um, and they're not a cheap company either, too. So, like, they're like, you know, you sometimes with that, you get the we are the shit mentality, but they're not. Um, and he was super great and everything. But he said one thing that I was just like, I was just like, why did you have to say that? So we were in the bride's room, and this was after we had found out that they were from the Ukraine and you know spoke Russian and everything. Well, and they're oh, you're fine. Are you good? Yeah. Oh yeah. So, so he the photographer. Yeah. So we were in the bride's room with her whole family, you know, all the Ukrainians, Russians, whatever you want to call them. And the bride's like, oh, yeah, you're going to have to make sure you tell us to smile because, you know, us Russians, Ukrainians don't really smile in pictures. And like, you know, and someone made the comment like, oh, we got to get rid and loosen up. And the photographer goes, oh, yeah, but we need some like vodka or something. Because they're Russian. Good joke, buddy. I was, I just, Zinger. I was just like, oh, my God, dude. Zinger. Like, it, it was just like a, just like a, yep, yeah, man, yep, they're Russian. We get it, buddy. Got anything else? See, so. it's funny. It, it's it's you can make those jokes like if you're with the family. Yeah. Not. Yeah. Exactly. 
And it wasn't like it was like a that's problem. That's why it was just I, like it was just such a dumb thing to that's say. That's why you just bite your tongue. Yeah, it was just dumb. It just it wasn't like offensive or anything. Yeah, it was, it was just, just like, like okay, yep. Yeah. Yeah, well, good what one. Is it? Good one, bud. Yep. That's that's what I heard playing in my head. Yeah. Well, Gavin, since you're gonna have to get out of here soon, why don't we talk about what we've been listening to this week, huh? Yeah. Um do you mean to start? Yeah. Yeah, if you want to. Because I've been dominating. This is a Gavin dominated episode for the first time. Gavin dominating. Yeah. Oh, hey, there it is again. It's something that's with this so point. weird. It's not even like if anything happens, it just like happens randomly. I'll figure it out. Gavin, why don't you dominate me some more and tell me what you're listening to, huh? All right. So this week, uh, you know what? Uh, hold He's on. back on the set, apparently. Yeah, hold on. Um,. So this week I'm listening to. That's so weird. I like literally nothing is happening. Yeah, I think it's just we might just need to unplug everything and plug it back in tomorrow or after this. Um, this week I've been listening to Hot Thoughts by Spoon. It was released in 2017. Um, it's another Spoon album that is kind of more recent and a little bit more experimental in sound. Okay. Um, overall, but um, I really enjoy this album a lot. Um, it's a little bit more synthy. Uh, it's still got guitar. It's still got their kind of signature sound. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of si- similar to that. But um, watching them live, I think this is the album I saw them tour with them. Yeah. Oh, you've seen Spoon? Uh huh. I've seen them live. It was awesome. How many times? Once. Oh. And I fucking loved it. It was awesome. I love it. I loved it. They were so good live. Britt Daniels is a genius. He's so good. Who's that? The singer. The singer. Good slash guitarist. Really good. The whole band. I mean, they're all like old. Like they're yeah. all like well, yeah. 50s. Yeah. They're another band that I need to listen to more. They, uh, so anyway, so their singles on this are uh, Do I Have to Talk it, talk You Into It, Hot Thoughts, and Can I Sit Next to You. However, um, I really like uh, Whisper, I'll Listen to Hear It, um, I Ain't the One, Tear It Down, and they're all rock, right? Yeah. Okay. And Shotgun, those are also... Th- this whole album besides Pink Up and Us are really good. Pink Up and Us just do not fit in this album. I don't know what they're doing. But, like, Us... I th- or maybe... It's, I think Pink Up is just, like, a weird sax, like, interlude with, like, reverse lyrics. I don't know what the point was. Don't okay. know why. Okay. It's I'm just pretty an interlude. Sure, yeah, it's just, like, a kind of yeah. interlude song. Um, I think it's just from one side to the other side yeah. of the album. Because it is, like, five songs, half. Five songs, half. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's synthy. It's got, it's got a good, like driving, it's got like dry, it's very like driven. Mm -hmm. It's a driven kind of beat, um, for most of these songs. And, uh, they, whenever they do it, whenever they do these songs live, they take a lot of liberty with it. And it's really cool just to see bands be able to do that Mm -hmm. and do it so well because, um, some bands like do it live and it's just kind of like, oh, you guys are definitely off beat and you guys are just making it seem like you guys are making it artistic. Yeah. But these guys like do a really good job of like, I I think uh, they did their opening song. I'm pretty sure was whisper. I'll listen to hear it, but they start out with like this seven minute long, like synthesizer, just solo. That's cool. Fucking awesome. It was so cool. And the guy, I mean, the guy was obviously coked out of his mind. The synthesizer guy coked out of his mind, but like, it was really good. Really good. Yeah. I mean, like he was going like, he was going like, and it wasn't even like it wasn't even like that hard. It was just like boom, 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 boom yeah, boom, boom, boom. Like it was, wasn't even that bad. He was into it. Yeah, he was really into it. So he was listening to that. Like it was like I think he was listening to eighths, like imaginary eighth beat. Mm. He was listening to a whole other like song. It was like one and two and three and four and or one e and a two e and a three e and a four e. Mm. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So yeah, really good album. Um, I wish that they released another album soon here. Because I miss listening to new stuff by then. When was their last album? This was it, 2017. Wow, really? Yep. Have they been talking about new music? I don't think so. I think they've been, um, they've been pretty like socially distant. I think as a band. So. Oh. What are you listening Thank you, to Ra- this week, Roberto? Ricardo. Ricardo. Excuse me. I was thinking about someone else. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Well, Gavin, this week I got into a band that I 
I've never listened to before and never really heard. Of, well, no, I think I've heard of them. But the reason I started listening to them is because uh, I was getting, I was doing like a trade deal type thing with a friend um, for some stuff, for some clothes, obviously, not stuff, not nose candy. Um, and little bump. Little bump. Little bump. Little pump. I asked Gavin if he could bring a couple of those steroid shots home, and he did. So uh, he was sending me some band tees that he's like, oh, you might want these. Um, you can just throw them on the ground if you want to. I don't give a shit. Really, dude. So one of them was for a band called Nothing Face, which I had heard of, but I never heard anything from them. So I was like, oh, you know, I like I want to get that shirt. And then I was like, you know, let me listen to them. So I listened to like their first song and I was like, eh, it's okay. And then I was like sitting in the car doing something on my phone and just like, you know, the next song plays. And the next song I was like, whoa, this song is fucking really, really good. And then so I just started listening to more and more. And then like some of their songs that aren't as popular because they're not a very popular band anyways. Um, some of their other songs that like weren't even close to the top of their like popularity list were like, even better and so i was like let me i want to dive into more of this um and then i fucking felt like they like they're obviously a heavy metal they're they're called a heavy metal band but i would say it's more metalcore hardcore kind of music it's not at least this album i'm going to recommend um and it's kind of like you can kind of hear like reminiscence of like slipknot in their sound and there was one song oh damn it i can't remember what the song was that's so weird i really don't know what that is um there's they, one they, they may not even hear it on the recording yeah maybe not who knows there was one song and i think it was by this band but i'm blanking out if it was someone else but it was like I think it was. I was listening to the song and I was like hearing the beats and I'm like, wait a minute, this is like almost exactly the same as this other song. And I couldn't tell you what it was, of course, but um, yeah, they, they, they're just like, there's stuff in their music and on this album that like I hear a lot now in like newer metalcore stuff that like listening to this album, it, it's just like, it, it's so crazy because it's like, holy shit, they were so ahead of their time, but they're like not that popular and like I don't, I've never heard anybody talk about them. I'm sure they they obviously have a following. They might have been like one of those bands where they're always uh pe- they inspire people to make yeah. new music, you know. Because yeah, it's just like crazy like so and I think that replacements were in that kind of like yeah, never sure. heard of them before and then there's a lot of bands that, that are like, like that. Uh, they are like inspired and then they inspire somebody to basically yeah. do a better version of them. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, like I said, the band is Nothing Face. The album I'm recommending is an album called Violence from 2000. Um, songs I want to recommend off there. My favorite song from the band is this song called Blue Skin on this album. It's just like, it's like like the beginning. Oh, I remember what it was. Now, it is this song. Okay, now I remember what I was thinking of. Okay, so... It's like the beginning is like very like of the time kind of heavy metal metalcore stuff, you know, like a lot of like corn, the band corn, like a bunch of yeah, stuff like that disturbed. Like just that kind of like it's very like similar. It's of the time, but then they have this like breakdown section at the end that is just like it's just like something Crazy. that you would hear like now that's just like what the fuck? Like where did that even come from? And so this song, when I was listening to it, I was like, oh, this is like very similar to this song by a band that's more popular. This band Sepultura. I think I've actually um, heard of them. Yeah. So they have a song I called. I don't know why, but I have. Yeah. They have, I might have <coughs> talked about them before. They have a song called, uh, I think it's just called Bloody Roots. It might be called Roots. Bloody. It, it's called Bloody Roots. Or maybe it's just called Roots. Ooh, whatever. And it's like, and when I'm like listening to the song, this song and i'm thinking about that song in my head it's like they're very similar except for like the breakdown at the end of roots uh of roots is like it's different than this and it's more of that time than this song which was like in my opinion like way ahead of the time because people weren't it's like a breakdown where it's like they go like half time mm-hmm. and then there's like the double like, bass no, not even. I actually don't think there's any double bass. Wow. Okay. They'll um, go halftime and then they'll like hard stop, 
pick up like and it's just like you, you know what i mean yeah. like it's just like they stop and then it's like a heavy hit and yeah they do that a few times at the end and like that's not anything that i've heard like, of but 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 yeah exactly but a, but a, but a, but exactly like yeah. similar to that yeah um and so like that just like blew my mind hearing that because it's like you didn't hear that during that time yeah um and yeah they're just a fucking really good band and i still haven't listened to this whole s- album um but obviously blue skin is really good bleeder is really good make your own bones is really good uh yeah i'd have to listen to more <laughs> there's a song called everlasting god stopper which is really <laughs> funny um yeah they're just a fucking good band and like it's just funny how i heard about them and now i really like their stuff and i listen to it a lot and i'm gonna listen to more because they've been around for a while yeah since like early maybe even late 80s to be honest but their first album at least on here was 95 but i've seen shirt oh they were formed in 93 okay so maybe that was a different band yeah they're just really fucking good and I'm glad I found out about them and I'm hoping the shirt that I'm getting, the shirt that I'm getting is for that album too. And I'm hoping it fits me. And yeah, I think that's about it. We're going to have to wrap this up because I yep. know Gavin's got to get going. Uh, so without further ado, taking so many screenshots right now. Well, right, everybody, thanks for tuning into the eight takes on Kaidens podcast. Thank you so much, Carson, for having me on this week. <laughs> I'm so glad to have you, dude. We were gonna I was talking to Quinn about replacing you. Yeah. It's really loud. I was talking to Quinn about replacing you pla- replacing him with you. With yeah. you with him with him with you with him with him. Yeah. And you know, I was just like, fuck it. I'll have Gavin back on, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Don't you fucking think I'm gonna forget about what you did to me. Okay. Don't you ever put me in Don't that fucking ever. position again, you motherfucker. Well, right, everybody, thanks for tuning in. I hope that you guys enjoy this episode, and we'll have a good rest of your week. And we'll be back. <laughs> we'll be back next week with another episode that's gonna be better than this one, hopefully. Better. Well, this one, I don't know. I just feel like we're we're getting we're getting back to it. Get and back we're, to it. We're. I, I don't know. I just feel like maybe this episode wasn't at the level that we usually have been at. It I feel was like me. it was good. It was my dominated episode. No, I like that. I like that part. And then after that, you're like, what did you do? And I was like, and then I spaced <laughs> out because I completely didn't even think about what to you talk about. You to my story. I just, I'm in love with you, Gavin. Goodbye, man.